Hi everyone and welcome to an introduction to Great Digital Color. This introduction serves to give you an overview of color in digital photography. In the following videos we'll go through the details of each step that you can take to put a complete color workflow together. When you understand how color works from capture to edit to print, you'll get better images and better prints. Before we can bend before we can begin to put together a digital color workflow, it helps to know where the problems lie and what steps will be necessary to correct them. Now, keep in mind, every image loses data as it makes its journey from capture through edit and finally to output. And understanding how to maintain the best color and tonal range possible will help you consistently produce the best results. What we're after is a way to produce consistent and repeatable color from our prints wherever they are made, be it at a lab or on your own desktop inkjet printer. To make this happen, we have to take control of a color on each device we use and understand where problems might occur. The places we want to take control of are the monitor, color coming out of the camera, and finally the printing process. Each of these areas requires something called a profile. Now, color profiles are really not all that mysterious. They're simply a set of corrections to make sure color on one device translates as efficiently as possible to another place with a minimum amount of data loss. For example, a monitor profile translates the color information in your image into colors that your monitor can then display. Now, this is necessary because your digital camera captures many more colors and more tonal range than your monitor can actually show you. If you don't take this important first step, you're going to be working at a great disadvantage. So since this is so important, let's take a little closer look. If there were just one part of the color workflow you have to take care of, it's ensuring your monitor is displaying color to the best of its ability. Think of it this way. Every decision you make when evaluating the color and tone of an image takes place on your monitor. If your monitor is not correctly set up, then your edits are based on the wrong information. Now, most monitors come out of the box way too bright and often a bit too blue. Now, the brightness makes games, movies, and your web browser intense and colorful. The tendency towards a blue shift is because blue makes whites look whiter. Again, great for games and movies, but bad for photography. Here's what happens if you leave your monitor in this state. When you're editing your images on a bright monitor, well, you make adjustments to color and tone based on what you see. So if you have an overly bright image, you'll bring the brightness down so that it looks good to you on your monitor. However, the problem is that the image file you're viewing really isn't that bright. It's the monitor that's adding that brightness. When you send your image out to print, it ends up being darker and duller because the image you were previewing was being enhanced by the monitor. When you have your monitor brightness set accurately, the luminance of your image is displayed correctly, and that's a big first step towards getting accurate prints. The next part is the color. As I mentioned, most monitors are a little bit too blue, and also the saturation is often too high. Again, this can make images look crisp and intense, but once again, it's the monitor that's causing this, not the actual data in the image file. If you print an image based on what you see on this display, it's going to end up being desaturated and also a little bit yellow. We need to make sure that our monitors are accurately showing us what our image files really look like. When that happens, we can make editing decisions based on what the photo actually looks like, and the final result will be prints that much more closely match what our edits on the screen look like. Now, to make this happen, you need some hardware and software to calibrate your monitor. Now, in, in my opinion, the device with the best bang for the buck is the Color Monkey display. I have one right here. It's both powerful and very easy to use. You can run it completely automated, and when it's completed its duties, your monitor will be showing you the most accurate color possible. Now, to see all this happen step by step, take a look at the video titled Accurate Monitor Color. The second place to take control of color involves creating and using custom camera color profiles and knowing how to prepare files for sending out to the lab. The necessity for these profiles is to provide the best translation possible from your raw digital file data into both Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, Adobe does provide a generic conversion for your files, but unfortunately it does cause a lot of color loss. Since we want to maintain the best color possible through our journey from capture to edit to print, we don't want to give up color right at the start. 
Fortunately, this is easy solved, but it does require one more tool. And I have it right here. The X-Rite Color Checker Passport has become a standard piece for all of my photo shoots wherever I go. Now, I don't want it to sound like a commercial, but I do have a tendency to gush a little bit about this simple accessory. The, this color chart and its software provide a much better color conversion for your RAW files in the Lightroom and Photoshop because they create a profile. Once again, a set of corrections that are specific to both your camera and the lighting conditions. I think this is one of the best accessories ever and should be in your camera bag. Now, by having your monitor calibrated and a custom camera color profile, you actually have all the tools you need to get great prints back from your lab. The last step to make this happen is to understand how to save your image edit into a file that will translate best for the lab's printer. To see this in more detail, watch the video titled Getting Great Prints from Your Lab to see this process from beginning to end. The third step in this series is for those who want to produce professional grade accurate prints from their own desktop printers. This involves understanding, creating, and using custom printer profiles to produce the best prints possible. The profiles convert the data in your image file into the color space and capabilities of your printer and paper combination. This is an important point. Different papers are going to produce differing levels of color, saturation, and depth depending on the surface, and you need to have a paper profile for each paper you print on. Now, while printer manufacturers and paper manufacturers will offer profiles for their papers, they often fall short of taking advantage of the full range of tone and color that the paper and printer combination are capable of producing. This is more common when you print on one of the beautiful fine art papers available. Watercolor and matte stocks, canvas, textured and toned papers produce wonderful prints, but you want to make sure that the results are accurate as possible. Now these papers are not cheap, so I don't think you want to print a file five times in an attempt to get one good print. By having a custom paper profile, you can get great prints the first time and that saves you time, money, and eliminates a lot of frustration. In the desktop printing video, we'll take you through the hardware and process to create and implement custom paper profiles. With the capability of soft proofing in both Lightroom and Photoshop, you get to see a pretty close depiction of what your print will look like before you even click on the print button. With a little bit of practice, you can then get great prints from your own printer every time. While there are more details to discuss, that's sort of a broad overview of the places you can take control of color to ensure the best results possible. This series of videos will address each step in detail so that you can take control of your color to produce beautiful prints. So get your favorite images ready and I'll see you there.